Get it one, be agent out here. Today we're gonna to do the in-depth review of this Dell Latitude 7410 2 one Now what does that 2 one means? It means it can do its party trick, which is flip its screen around and it actually becomes a tablet there. Now if you've got a digital pen like this one here, you can then start taking notes or doing some drawings or do some writing there, which is absolutely fantastic. And of course it's touch screen to actually support this pen here now. So this is a 14 inch premium business laptop. Now being part of the 7 series, it is classified as a lightweight class, so it is actually quite lightweight for you to travel around with. Now, I'm going to quickly go through its specs and then I'm going to have to look at its temperatures and noises as well as the speakers and also it, later in the video, the internals as well. So be sure to stick around for that one there. With the Latitude 7410, it can be configured with, for processor-wise, it is running the 10th generation Intel Core. So you can actually either put in an i5 in this, which is four cores, or an i7, which can be four cores or six cores. Now, as for RAM wise, it can go up to a maximum of 32 gigs of RAM and that's soldered to the system board. So you've got to be careful when you actually choose the RAM here because you can't really add more later on. So as for the hard drive wise, it has one slot of SSD hard drive and that is in the format of M.2 and it can go up to a maximum capacity of one terabyte there. Now as for the graphics wise, it's just using Intel integrated graphics, so nothing flash there. For display wise, there are two options. The first being the full HD option, which I have right here, and it is rated at 300 nits. Now I will be creating a separate video to do a more in-depth review of this display here. I will look at its brightness and also its color calibration as well as testing for PWM. So be sure that check that video out. I'll put a link in the description below so when that video is made available there. So the second option is a full HD, also 300 nits brightness as well, but that one is a privacy safe screen there. And what that pretty much does is it limits the viewing angles to pretty much what's in front of the screen there to the computer user there. So you don't have people prying eyes from the side there. So it's really good if you're working on sensitive information there. I must mention from the previous video when I did the unboxing of this computer here, I did confirm with Dell that the glass they use for the 7410 is the same as the 7400. It is still using the cornering glass six. Let's have a look at the ports. Starting on the right side of the computer, we have the optional SIM card slot, universal audio jack, we have two USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports, one on the right has power share, and then we have the wedge shape lock slot for you to tie the computer off. And then looking around the back, we have the exhaust fan here, else, there's nothing else around the back here. And then on the left hand side, we have HMI 2.0, which is great. And then we've got two Thunderbolt 3 ports here. Now these two Thunderbolt 3 ports are four lanes for bandwidth, which is great. And then we have the micro SD card reader, which I like to see them keep that. And then there will be the optional smart card slot here as well, which this one does not have optioned in. And then around the front here, all we have is the diagnostic light, which is near the middle there. And that's all there is. Now as for the webcam which is located on top of the screen is nicely neatly put in and it does have a privacy screen there. Now it is a 720p webcam and unfortunately I was mistaken at the unboxing. I thought it was a 1080p but it's not. It is a 720p webcam there and it's got a privacy shutter so it's just made of on top there is a little nice little switch and you can pretty much give it a nice little flick and you'll see it go red so it actually has a physical shutter there so people can't really turn it on neither. So it's great you don't actually need that little blue tech anymore or electrical tape which is fantastic there. As for the keyboard, it has changed since the Dell Latitude 7400. The actual key spacing between its keys has gone a little bit more narrower. And initially at the start, I thought I might not like it, but after spending a bit of time typing on it, I really like the actual change there. I actually feel like my typing speed's gone a little bit even more quicker than before, which is absolutely fantastic there. It's actually great, and even the texture of it is beautiful as well too. And I also find that the actual palm rest is beautifully amount there, which is actually great. It's not uncomfortable at all. So if you've got big hands there, you can actually put your palms there and quite comfortably touch type very nicely or even just type in line around there, which is great there. And as for the key feel wise, 
it's still got a fair bit of tactileness to it, which is great. And as unfortunately, as time goes by, as we get thinner and thinner laptops, we are starting to lose a bit of the key travel on a lot of the laptops. But I think Dell has absolutely done a great job in maintaining a nice amount of key travel there, which is good there. And it's still got a very good tactile feel to it as well too. Now, if you're using a previous model of the 74, thousand series be not fooled that the power button has moved its position it's now integrated back into the rest of the keys and so it, your delete key has been moved as well it's gone more left so be not fooled of that so you actually don't actually accidentally go to the very top right and then click on delete hoping for the delete key but you actually find the power key and put the computer to sleep which i've done a few times there and it's just a matter of getting adjusted to that now for the power key there it has an integrated fingerprint reader if you got that option in which is absolutely great so i think the new keyboard has a very nice professional look to it as before which is right there as for the trackpad it has changed gone are the two mechanical buttons on the bottom it's no longer there it's now one unified trackpad there and it's got this really gorgeous sort of feel to it which is a glass based feel to it which is absolutely beautiful to glide your fingers over and if you've got moist hands you can quite easily glide over it as well too beautiful beautiful feel to it and it's i have noticed it is now about a little bit more larger than previous one it's about 15 percent more larger than previous one and i find this is an absolute brilliant size it's not overly too large where you actually have your palms accidentally click on it which is great there so i really like this new trackpad there they've put in the 7410 the 7410 does ship with a 65 watt power adapter which is up to the great and it's gone a lot more slimmer it's actually gone lighter as well too and it is now changed to a USB-C type at the very end there which is absolutely fantastic there now as for the battery wise there's a few options there the one I've got here is a 52 watt hour battery which is a four cell one and when I did test out the battery life and I put it in its four different modes there so I had the computer on load and I pretty much put it on performance mode and I managed to pull one hour and 30 minutes there as for better performance mode i did drop the computer load a little bit and i managed to get six hours there and as for the better battery life i did again drop the load a little bit and just did your average use of just productivity work and streaming web surfing you're looking at seven hours there as for the battery saver mode i did drop the screen brightness from 50 percent down to 25 percent and i'm still continue doing my surfing productivity work you're still looking at 10 hours there although the computer reported up to 18 hours which is actually a fair bit so i say closer to about 10 hours there and the weight of the 7410 2 and one with the carbon fiber finish is 1.45 kilos and i'll add in the 65 watt power adapter makes it 1.74 kilos in total as for speaker wise it's got two speakers located on the bottom and when i did the speaker test for how loud it went it managed to peak at 89.1 decibels which is actually really decent it is quite capable to do on-site presentation with this computer here and you won't be too busy struggling to hear the computer there it's absolutely fantastic and as for the speaker quality wise it was actually did pretty really well actually it actually surprises me um, it wasn't too distorty at the very top end the base wise of course it's lacking but it wasn't too bad at all so it's got a little bit there uh, but it's not like amazing there for the base wise but i think you'll be finding it you'll be pretty okay decent speaker wise to actually just do your on site presentation there as for the temperature and noise of this computer while it's operating i found from my also my testers that the actual most of the heat is actually near the center of the keyboard which is not surprising because that's where the processor sits the second area is actually located near the top right of the keyboard where the home key is and again that's not surprising because that's where the exhaust vent is located as well now before i get started my ambient temperature was 19 degrees celsius now we're in winter here in australia i know some countries are much more cooler but here i feel a bit of a cold there because we're in mostly generally a hotter climate there now if you're in a more hotter climate i expect these numbers to go up as well when i had the computer on idle i did take a measurement of the middle of the keyboard and you're looking at 26 degrees celsius when i had the computer at 15 percent load so workloads like productivity work streaming surfing the web that sort of work which is not that strenuous for the computer 
the center of the keyboard measured at 36 degrees Celsius and 32 decibels for noise. And near the vent, it is around about 40 degrees Celsius. So that's quite hot up there. And when the computer was running at 50% load, the middle of the keyboard was reading at 37 degrees Celsius and measured at 32 decibels again. And the actual exhaust was getting a lot more hotter at 50 degrees Celsius. So that's definitely a lot more hotter. I wouldn't be touching that. Now as for 100% load, it measured at the center of the keyboard, 46 degrees Celsius. And the fan only slightly went up a little higher and that was at 34 decibels. And the top of where the exhaust was, was at 51 degrees Celsius. So I had the computer at 100% load. I also measured the bottom of the computer and it measured at 57 degrees Celsius. So it's quite toasty at the bottom. So I do not advise people to actually put this on your lap while this computer is crunching numbers there for sure. Definitely put it on another surface there. Overall, I find this computer actually quite quiet. Even on load, it actually doesn't spin the fan up that much, but it is quite a high pitch sort of whine. Uh, so it must have a very high RPM on the fan there. And on the right side, it is magnetic, so I can actually hold the pen there, which is fantastic. Let's do the Lionel Jitter test. Now I'm going to use this Dell Premium Active Pen, which is the PN579X. Now I've also made a video on how to use it and also the setup guide as well. So I'll put in the link in the description below if you check, want to check that video out. I also have an affiliate link if you're looking to purchase this pen as well. So I'll put in the link in the description below as well too. So I'll start off with some slow diagonal lines. Now I do have my palm on the screen here. Now bear in mind I am not in any sort of form a digital ours. I'm not really that great at drawing in the first place as well too so bear in mind uh, apologies on my awful drawings and straight lines. So I'm just doing some slow lines here. Just some quick lines just so you can see what it looks like from this side. Now I'm also going to bring in a uh, microfiber cloth here. And I'm just going to rest my palm to see if it will make any difference at all for you. Because I know some digital artists use some sort of like sleeve glove to help with drawing and I'm also going to bring in a ruler Let's see how that goes and I'm gonna leave my palm off first and now I'm gonna put my palm on Let's see how that goes all right and I'll just do some quick lines in a way, just to see how that goes. Alright, and we'll just do some horizontal ones. It's normally pretty right. Some quick ones here. And I'll just do some with my ruler. Palms off. That's all right. I'll do some palm on. Not bad at all. Sorry, I missed that one there. That's not bad. And what I might do is just do some seashell ones. I've got to say the parallax is not bad at all. I don't find it lag that laggy at all. Let's just do that one more time on down here as well too. I'm not very good at doing keeping these things even. I'm doing my best to keep it even. All right, there. and now I do know they also have pressure sensitive as well. Whoops, wrong pen. So soft, hard, so it is got pressure as well. Soft, hard. Now for the people who actually do a bit of drawing on their computers, I'll just take note of is that some people have been told to like to have their computer sitting on their lap and they'll hold the actual computer on top of the computer here and as you can see I'm a right hander and I'm going to start drawing with my right hand and you can see where my left hand is currently sitting and it is currently just covering the exhaust hole on the top left hand corner there so it starts actually getting quite hot if you're actually running some other software behind or if you're having a lot of 
processing layers there, it starts actually getting heated up a little bit, so it becomes a little bit tiny, a little bit uncomfortable, uh, especially you've got a bit of hot air blowing out that exhaust vent there as well. So just do take note of, it'd be nice if, it wouldn't be a problem with your left hand drawer, but on the right hand drawer you start to see that problem there, so you might have to adjust your holding there, uh, how to actually hold it to so it won't be as uncomfortable there. Another thing I found while I was testing the computer in tablet mode, I was actually adding a fit and I wanted to take some notes there. And as you can see on my right hander here, and I would normally like to actually grip the computer with my left hand and then have this resting on my left forearm there. And just work it like as if it's a clipboard there. Now, as you can see with my left hand here, it's actually gripping underneath there is actually the exhaust vents there. So, it actually can get quite heated up there and becomes a little bit uncomfortable, but luckily word processing doesn't take that much. But if you've got other processors running in the background, or if it does a virus scan at the same time, it can get quite heated up there and it becomes quite uncomfortable to actually hold there. So I've actually tried to actually flip this around to the other side, and then I'll become another problem with basically the exhaust vents are now located on the bottom of my forearm there, which is just as bad there as well. So there's no winning for a right-hander here. So the only really suggestion is to actually have this resting on a surface as you do some writing uh, on the field there. So definitely just a tip for you guys who are trying to use this as a, as a writing tool, uh, especially as a right-hander, best to actually have this resting on another surface while you actually do some note taking there. So let's have a look at the internals of the Latitude 7410 2-in-1. Now first off, you're just going to remove the eight screws, which are pretty easy to do. They are fillet pads, which is fantastic. And then start prying off, and the easy way to do it is go from the hinge and go around that way there from both sides of the hinge there. And then it's a matter of pre taking off the back cover and this is what you see inside. It's pretty basic because there's not really much you can do to it. So first off we can see off is 52 watt hour battery here. This is a four cell battery. They do have a three cell battery which is a 39 watt hour one and I know there's a six cell battery which is a 68 watt hour battery as well too. So I'm taking this, they somehow fit in the same amount of space there which is pretty crazy for a six cell battery. But the three cell battery I'm taking this would be a little bit smaller there. And pretty much is here's a tag to actually remove the battery off, which is a good idea to do if you're working. And then we've got four screws here now. Pretty undone them already, so you can actually see what's underneath there. There's not really a whole much you can actually see underneath there, so not much you can have a little bog around. So not really anything to see. And then we've got an SSD here. Now I am going to unscrew that very quickly, so you can actually see that. And it is a heat sink here, so that's copper underneath when there's some thermal paste there, which is fantastic. And there's an the SSD. It's only got one SSD, which is M.2 format, so it's pretty easy to upgrade that one there. And then you cover that one there, there as well too. Uh, actually, while we have this one done, because you do need to have the screw undone, you can actually lift this up. There's not really much hiding underneath this one here, so I'll just give me a second. There's definitely not that much hiding underneath here. And that's pretty much all the rest that's hiding on there. So we've got the WAN card on this side here, and I think this is the Bluetooth card here around here as well. And as you can't really upgrade the RAM because the RAM is part of integrated into the system board there. So really the only thing you really need to upgrade is the SSD hard drive. So not really much to poke around the 7410. The Dell WD19TB dock is fantastic to work with in conjunction with this Dell Latitude 7410. So it can actually drive more monitors, uh, have more USBs and also Thunderbolt ports as well too. So definitely one to actually look into. The WD19 dock, the non-Thunderbolt version, will still work, but of course you lose your Thunderbolt ability there of course, and a few resolutions as well. I did run the benchmarks for this computer here, and I'll put it up on the screen for you to see. So here is the Passmark, Citibench R15, and R20, PC Mark 10, and Spec View Pref as well. As for the build quality of this computer, it is pretty decent there. The one I've got here is the carbon fiber finish there, so it's actually quite nice there, finish there. And then pretty much it's just 
plastic all around, but I must say it's pretty durable plastic there. I've had a lot of these Dell's latitudes around around the world and they're quite happy. They can actually take a fair bit of a beating there for sure. The Dell Latitude 7410 2-in-1 has many improvements compared to the 7400 and I do like these new improvements making it a much better computer than previously. Now the one thing I do wish they actually brought back was the RJ45 Ethernet port. I don't really want a dongle for it. I like to see them bring back that little lever system. We don't really need it thinner. It's good enough. Bring back that lever system with the RJ45. A lot of businesses still use Ethernet cable connection for a lot of these laptops still. So Dell, please bring that one back. It would definitely make us a lot more happier for sure. If you find this video informative, enjoyed it, give it a like. And if you haven't done already, subscribe to my channel by hitting the subscribe button on the screen. I do try to upload a new video every week. And just remember, imperfections in life makes it beautiful and interesting. I'll see you next video.